Well, that introduction still gives me fucking chills to the bone. <laughs> Be honest, how many of you thought we were going to do Dark Souls first? Hell no, we start at the beginning, bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm NoGod21, welcome to Let's Play Demon Souls, the first in the Soul franchise. Originally released in North America in, let's see, is it February? No, February is Japan. October 2009. Holy shit, that... That's uh, off. Uh, 13 years ago. Holy ball sacks. Wow, time flies. <coughs> <sighs> so yeah. The first in the Souls franchise and the only port... And the only Demons... And the only Souls game that hasn't got a PC version. Bloodborne is not a Souls game. Neither is Sekiro. Deal with it, you fucking idiots. Anyway... I am playing this on the RPC3... Is it SE or just E? Anyway, I'm playing this on a PS3 emulator. <laughs> Fantastic! Unfortunately for me, the emulator is still in alpha stage. As of the time of this recording, I am running, I am running alpha... Point zero point zero point two zero dash one three three two two. Yeah. So yeah, I did a little bit of testing to make sure everything's up and good. <clears throat> My advice: if you want to play Demon Souls, go with the official options, not the emulator route, because the emulator is still in alpha, and well. Alpha emulators tend to be, um, shall we say, volatile in terms of fidelity and performance. I guess during that, uh, during my testing, I was reaching up to 50% maximum usage on my CPU, which is rare. I mean, it's rare for the games that I play. Anyway, if you have a PS5 and you're a lucky son of a bitch who does, I suggest getting the remake. Because one, it looks nicer, and two... It's probably one of the easiest methods to play the game at this point. If you have a working PS3, get the PS3 version, even though you probably can't do online. Although, in my personal opinion, the online of the Souls franchise is absolute garbage and never should have been implemented, because I despise fucking PvP. Especially in these type of games. Anyway, enough of me rambling about technical bullshit, let's get started. New game. Cannot connect to Demon Soul servers. Bah, 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 bah. I don't have to worry about that fucking up my tendency events. And I play in offline mode anyway. Now then. While I am running this on an emulator with the best things that I could get, I am not running this at 60 FPS or higher. <coughs> or in higher resolution than 720. For two reasons. The resolution is because if you try to increase the resolution past what's what's natively, you tend to get some problems at this at this point in development. And for the frame rate, the Souls franchise is rather infamous for having the game physics and systems integrated with its frame rate. So if you try to force it to run at the frame rate it's not specifically made to be, you end up causing some uh, problems with the physics, like falling through ladders. Or your entire dodging and parry mechanics are completely and utterly fucked, because they're off time. Since the game's meant to run at 30, and you're playing at 60 or higher, it's either double or triple the frames. And it causes a bunch of problems. So I wouldn't do that. But hey, you do you. <sighs> the only other thing I installed is that uh, there's a known issue with Demon Souls currently where it's missing some geometry data. So I had to install a mod to fix that. Other than that, it's all standard. No other, no HD crap, no button crap, no disabling lens flare garbage, none of that shit. Everything is set to default. Oh, <sighs> good God! It feels weird to be playing this. <laughs> anyway, we're here on a character select character creation screen, so we're gonna be here a while. I just know it. And as always. The character editor in Souls is complete and utter dog shit. Ranging from semi passable human beings to other Shrek monstrosities. Seriously, just watch any speed run or a challenge run, they always end up making something monstrous instead of something that's actually pleasing to look at. I mean, granted, most of the time their heads are covered up by helmets anyway, but the point still stands. Anyway, our starting classes we have Soldier, Knight, Hunter, Priest, 
Magician, Wanderer, Barbarian, Thief, Temple Knight, and Royalty. Now, while I could go into all of these, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, because you could basically customize your character no matter what you pick at the start. All this dictates is your starting equipment and your starting level. For a soldier starts at level 6, a knight starts at level 4, a hunter starts at level 6, priest starts at 6, magician starts at 6, the wanderer starts at 6, the barbarian starts at level 9, the thief starts at level 9, the temple knight is at level 4, and royalty starts at level 1. My personal recommendation? Depends on your playstyle. If you want to do magic, you pick royalty or magician. If you want to do healing spells, temple knight or cleric. And if you want to just want to play sword and board, you pick the knight. Because the knight has some of the best armor in the game. <laughs> or at the very least, it's the poster child of the game, and I think the armor looks badass. I'm not so keen on the fluted uh, helmet design, but whatever, what can you do? Anyway, for my purposes, we're going to be picking the royalty class. Why? Because we start at level 1. We have decent magic and faith stats, which are used for spells and healing miracles. And a decent intelligence, which means we probably don't need to worry about spell slots for a while. Ugh. I am no fucking German spy, so uh, while I could go into a tangent and rant about how everything works, I'm not going to do that because I am shit at explaining things. Plus, I can't really hover over the stats in this, in this fucking menu anyway. Okay, we're gonna be royalty. We're gonna be male. Touch her name. Uh, da -da 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 -da. hello, rudimentary text box. Uh, what shall our name be? How the hell with it? Jack is back. And this time he's in for hell. How do you feel about this, Jack? Fuck you. Did you hear something? I hate you so much right now. Ah, okay. Doesn't really have a pronounced voice, Jack, because I'm not done finishing creating what his face would look like. <laughs> oh boy. This is probably going to be a while. See, we got the west, we got the east, we got the south, we got the north. What shade of red do you want your male character to be? <laughs> and do you want to go to a sickly fucking orange? Seriously, the lighting does not help this at all. Okay, details. Okay, so that's what that does. Uh, that's what that does. Uh, that's what that does. It's been a while since I've actually gone through Demon Souls character creator. Speaking of which, the last time I played this game was oop years, like at least five. Vertical spacing. Uh, what's, uh, not touch that. Feature inclination? Does that move everything up or down? Yeah, it moves everything up. Horizontal spacing. At a certain point, it just gets weird and alien to me. Okay, that's the general shape. Can I change this? Skin tone! Here we go. That's better. Let's get rid of some of the fucking tint, shall we? Maybe I can make you look healthy. Or at least have a matching skin t color. This is the, probably, probably the best I'm gonna get. Really, we could just do general shape and tone? Okay, this is basic as fuck. Well, actually, I could go down. Let's see. Is there anything in specific that I want to change? Uh, can I change the lips at all? Hair color, jaw, mouth, and lip details. Here we are. Lips. There we 
really should say just how wide your mouth is. Jeez, if I actually fuck with this a lot, I'm gonna be here all day. Mouth chin span. Okay, uh, position's fine, illusion's fine, slant. No, I could change the lip color. Why am I bothering even with this? I could be wearing a helmet for the most of the game anyway. Uh, eyeballs. Here we go. I hear it. Can I change the color at all? I can change the socket color, the socket brightness, the eyelid brightness, the eyelid color, the eyeliner, the eyeshadow. Yeah, sure, let's just give him fucking raccoon eyes. Uh, position. That's fine. Eye size. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Good God, moving the eyes in and out, closer or away from the nose, just fucks with my depth perception, something fierce. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Eyebrows. Can I change the color at all? No. Forehead, don't really care about. Uh, the nose looks not horrendous. It's mainly the jaw and cheekbones I'm worried about. Chin? No. Jaw, here we are. Let's wind the jaw up a little bit. Can't really tell where it where, if it's actually doing anything. Ah, that's that's changing. That should be fine where it is. That should be good. Facial hair. Well, I probably actually need to select facial hair. I'll like, change the hair color at the very least here. Okay, let's actually change out the hairstyle a little bit before I do anything with that. Uh, it's either gonna be swept back or part center is my is what I usually go with. Um. We'll go swept back, and we'll make it black, because why not? Okay, hair color. Wait, jaw. Facial hair. Oh, so that's how we get it. Oh, God. No. Get out of here. That just looks horrendous. There's no way to select everything to the fucking side. Oh well. 
can't really do much. Let's see. Yeah, no, keep it, keep it young. Keep, yeah, keep it like that. Okay, we're good. Let's do this. King Aland the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valarfax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old king Alant had aroused the old one, the great beast below the nexus from its eternal slumber, and that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls also lose their minds. The mad attack the sane, and chaos reigns. Valarfax spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors were drawn to the accursed land. But none have returned. Bjor of the Twin Fangs. Yurt the Silent Chief. Sage Urbane. Skurver the Wanderer. The sixth saint Astraea and her knight Garl Vinland. And Sage Freik the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Would you like to play the journey to the Nexus? Would I like to play the tutorial level? Yes, I would, please. You don't have that message if you never played the game before. Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Yes, let's walk into the mysterious light. Actually, I think you do have to I think you get that message regardless. Anyway, welcome to the tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, I also remembered. There are some extra options you can choose, which disable motion blur and dynamic range. You see, normally... You see this little uh, thing we got on our belt? Uh, let me just bring up my... Uh, inventory? Yes. I'll get a soul. A stone that radiates soul light. So is it this one? Yeah, okay, it's square. A stone light that radiates with the col with the light of souls. The color of the light changes according to the souls in the area. It was made by a bit. It was made by Gary. Or is it Jerry? I'm not sure which. A friend of Sage Frake, who is known for his magical crafts. Since it's light and easy to handle, it's widely used by travelers. And every single name that lady said in the intro is important in some way or form in this game. We're gonna meet all of them, pretty much. Except for one. 
Although I think that one's mainly the corpse of one. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. This uh, bauble that we have on our belt is actually a light source. But since I have dynamic range turned off, it's not as bright as, it all, as it's supposed to be. Which means the game's gonna be darker, but that's fine because by turning that off, I increase my game's performance and it stops graphical flickering. Because like I said, the same layer is an alpha stage. And, it's, and while it is getting significantly better as each as it progresses, it's slow and steady. Because if you just boot this up, you're going to have massive amounts of uh, texture problems and shading problems. Because they have to load first. But once they compile while you're playing the fucking game, it runs perfectly fine. But that first boot up is a giant pain in the ass. Which is why I had a test character. See, is there anything else I need to say? Oh, yes. There is one other thing I need to say. Expect to have my character jitter when he runs forward. Like that, because, you know, drifting analog stick. Anyway, I think that's it for everything technical. Ah, uh, yes. I suppose I might as well show off my equipment. We start off with Buckler. Whoops, wrong button. We start off with Buckler, a Rapier, a Silver Catalyst, Half Moon Grass, a Royal Lo some Royal Lotus, a Fragrant Ring, and the Wizard Set in the Silver Coronet. The Rapier. A small Rapier. Rapiers have a narrow attack range but deal heavy damage. They work well against metal armor and hard scales, but are easily parried and adequately break the enemy's guards. The wielder of a Rapier can attack with a shield raised, so it's better to use it to parry than block attacks while in the left hand. You can't do that. You can't do Rapier parry. That description is a lie. Silver Catalyst, a tool held in order to use magic, given only to the magicians of the Yormadar lineage. Its unique property increases the user's maximum MP! And a buckler, made for parry. It use requires a fair amount of skill in general. Light equipped soldiers pair this with a rapier. You know, because of parrying, which is the, one of the most broken mechanics in its souls. Which is why it gets heavily nerfed as the series goes on. The wizard says nothing special, but the silver coronet is. A crown wrought from silver. This decorative piece is only given to the famous magicians of the distinguished Yormadar family. It is imbibed with a unique spell that increases the bearer's maximum MP. So we have two items that increase our maximum MP pool. And since we picked nobility, we also get the Fragrant Ring. A nobleman's ring forged with spices. Recovers MP a little at a time. Extremely rare, extremely delicate piece of handiwork. So we have minor MP regeneration and two items that increase our maximum MP amount. Fantastic. We also have one spell to start off with, Soul Arrow. The most basic fucking ranged spell in the game. Press R1 for standard attack. Another good thing about not being on being, uh, being offline, I don't have to deal with fucking messages all over the place. The Rapier. Standard thrusting weapon. Only good for dealing critical hits and nothing else. Can you backstab and parry an opponent? You're good. If you can't, you're fucked. Ah, yes. Half Moon Grass. This is our healing potion, basically. And there's multiple types. And there's also status afflictions, which is why we have a Royal Lotus, which heals from poison. We're going to be dealing with poison a lot. And here's our first enemy of the game. Let's not get killed by the two fucking tutorial enemies, shall we? Direction and hold circle to sprint. Although I gotta say, it feels good to be playing a fucking Souls game. Let's see. L1 to guard. I'm using a buckler. You expect me to guard anything with this piece of shit? I guess it's better than a fucking wound shield. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I they, The game's definitely gonna be dark. Well, actually, since I turned that off, let me change up my settings here for real quick. Uh, everything's at 10. Where's the brain this section? There we go. Let's turn this up to a 7. Much better. Much better. Oh, yeah. Demon Souls has a problem with its camera. 
Whenever there's something behind you, the camera likes to zoom in when you scroll past it. Ugh. Click the R3 button to target lock and release. Right stick cheese locked on target. And ignore the phantom running around. That is something I'll explain in a bit. Oh, I'm going to be doing a lot of those in this, in this playthrough. I can just already tell. Okay. The phantom running around is a developer phantom. These, when they ever, sh when they actually show up for once, tell you where to go in a level. Or point to something that's actually helpful for you to progress. Eat this, you dick. And you didn't drop anything for me, you cocksucker. Yeah, like I said, because of my analog stick drifting, expect me to jitter around a lot. Crescent Moon Grass, this is our basic healing potion. This is a high potion. Why am I using Final Fantasy terms? Anyway, unequip this crap. Put the Crescent Moon Grass on, because we don't have that much HP, so using the Half Moon is actually kind of a waste. Square, use an item. Yeah, basically, X is interact, circle is dodge, and holding it to run. Triangle allows us to two-hand our weapon, which does nothing for the rapier at all. And Square uses the item. What's this? More moon grass. And there's only one way to go. Doink. Press circle, we backstep. We move the stick, we roll. I never backstep. This is the one, this is one of the major mechanics of the Souls franchise, which I never use. I always fucking roll or block. I don't do this. Mainly because my instinct, my instinct is to just fucking roll all over the place, not backstep away. Even though this should have as much iframes as this. But I, I'm absolutely trash at doing the backstep dodging. Anyway, more enemies to kill. Nice try. And all it takes is three hits to kill the stupid undead. Actually, technically they aren't undead, but they act like they're zombies. Oh wow! You jackass! That fucking follow-up wild, wild, wild swing always fucks me up. No matter what, no matter what I'm fighting, I you jackass! Get stabbed in the fucking spine. And sure, don't drop me anything. I see how it is. Nice try. Here, join your friend. But you can go into the water. Man, even with the dynamic range turned off, this looks... That's... Wow, that's beautiful. I mean, other than the obviously fucking, uh, pix... Anti-aliasing, uh, things with this... With that sword. This is a good screenshot. Too bad I'm not gonna do anything with it. And it looks like, uh, we're in a dilapidated keep of some kind. Great. And for the record, these zombies are called Dreglings. The basic bitch enemy of the entire game. Do, 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 do. And here we have an archstone. This is our teleportation device. This is how we get around to new areas. Technically. Because rather than taking a path, we just teleport there. Although one good thing about running this on an emulator, I don't have to deal with fucking PS3 load times. Strong attack. Which is R2, which is what I've been doing with the strong thrusting stab. Oh, hello, a soldier! Oh. Goodbye. Okay. We're gonna be seeing, seeing a lot of draggling in the soldiers for a while. Press L2 to parry. Repel an enemy attack, and after parrying, press the R1 to repost. Or is it repost? It's probably both. And this is what the fucking 
Rape beer is made for. There we go. 273 damage. And I stab him right in the dick. Every time. Every humanoid enemy I parry and I repose with this game, it's automatically a dick stab. Every single time. Yeah, my parrying, parrying timings are kind of shit. Or not. Fucking muscle memory, bitch. Ah, God, this feels good. I haven't played this game in fucking years, and I still got it. And press triangle to wield weapons in both hands. With other weapons, this actually increases the weapon damage. But for rapier, it's practically useless. I mean, unless you want to do style points, go ahead. Although one function of two-handing is that it depletes an enemy's stamina when they block with their shield. So if I do this... Or not... Eh, it's not gonna work with the rapier very well, is it? So I'll just do this. Alright then. Of course, I'm getting too confident. This is the tutorial. If you die in the tutorial against the random Joe Schmo enemies, you're terrible. Oh, god damn it, now I got something stuck in my eyeball. Ugh. Fucking loose hair and dandruff. Get out of my eyes. And the D-pad. Left and right. Change weaponry. The bottom changes the items equipped. And the top changes those spells that you have equipped. But since we don't have anything else... Ah, yes. Let's see if I can see this on the... Uh... We have 97 MP right now. If I swap to my uh, catalyst, we now have 116. Is that a 10% increase? Eh, whatever. With the catalyst, use R1 to use magic. Press up to change magic. And uh, and that's with the uh, healing spells too, even though they're called miracles. Half moon grass. Crossbowman, fuck you. Crescent Moongrass, three of them. Guaranteed drop, I think. And I like how I'm just ignoring the fucking background. Unknown Soldier Soul. We'll get into that, what that does in a bit. Let's see, is this the place? Uh, no, this isn't the place where you see an interesting uh, sight. Okay, so let's just continue progressing through the battlements here, and we come across... Boiling Stew. It's a lot of stew for a human, but I imagine that's for something a little bit bigger. Let's see, there's blood over the place. Oh, jeez. Hey, uh, crossbow guy. Stay there for a second. How much damage does this do to you? 101. One shot, bitch. Get out of my face. I did not mean to go through the fog wall. I meant to pick up this. Oh, jeez. That didn't kill you in one shot. Damn. Okay, am I actually getting important messages? No. Okay, I did not mean to traverse the fog wall, it's, which is basically the wall that prevents us from progressing through the level. But we've reached the boss of the level, ladies and gentlemen. If you die against the normal Riff Raft, then you suck really bad at these games. But if you die to the tutorial boss, that's completely fine, because you're supposed to die to this bastard. Because if you've never played these type of games before, dying against this boss is actually fine. Of course, as you beat him, you get a special reward. But, but before we enter that, though, um, should I heal? Eh, I probably don't need to. Should I probably wait for my MP to fill up the full? How much do I regenerate? 
One, two, three, four. Okay, one every four seconds. God damn, that's slow. Ah, at the very least, I can now show you the stats while this is doing stuff. Let's see. Name, gender, class, whatever. Vitality affects HP and the item burden you can shoulder. Oh, yes. Item and equip burden. Might as well go over these first. Equip burden. Combined weight of equipped weapons and armor. Movement slows when overburdened. Basically, the more heavier gear you have, the slower you are, which impedes your stamina regeneration and your rolling speed. The, the downside of having a slow rolling speed is that it removes your iframes. <laughs> so for example, this is full rolling speed. The entire animation of the roll has invulnerability frames where the enemy does no damage if you time it right. At slower roll speeds, this distance is significantly reduced, and it's also a lot slower, which means your iframes are significantly reduced. So that's bad, but the trade-off is you get increased defenses. Item burden, and this is the one stat I despise. Combined weight of all items on hand cannot hold more than the maximum burden. Everything you carry on your character goes to this stat. Every single healing item, every single fucking weapon, armor, rings, everything in our inventory goes under this stat. And it sucks, because I'm a fucking hoarder. And here we have ring effects, If, but since I don't have another one, we only have the one. The amount of souls that we carry. Let's see, HP is obvious, MP is spells and miracles, consume MP, stamina, it depletes while attacking, running, evading, etc. Automatically replenishes, blah 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 blah. Vitality affects the HP and item burn you can shoulder, so gotta pump up this to have high HP and to carry a lot of shit. Intelligence affects MP and capacity to remember spells. So intelligence for MP for more MP and more spell slots. Endurance affects stamina, equipment burn you can shoulder, and resistance to fire, poison, and bleeding. I don't understand how endurance increases our fire resistance, but sure. More stamina is always a good thing. Strength affects attack bonus and weapons you can carry. Dexterity affects attack bonus and damage the same for falling and weapons you can carry. Because if you don't meet the strength or dexterity requirements for a weapon, well, then you're SOL. You can't use it to its full effect. Magic affects spell power. Faith affects miracle power, capacity to remember miracles, and defense against magic. So raising our faith increases our miracle slots, which are separate from our spell slots, the power of the miracle, and our magic defense. And luck is a dumb stat, except for a certain weapon that requires high luck to be very damage efficient. Affects our item drop rate and plague resistance. Well, speaking of which, we got our physical defense. Defend against normal attacks. The, the practical number is the base unequipped value. Defense against blunt attacks. Defense against slashing attacks. Defense against pierce attacks. Magic defense. Defense against magical attacks. And defense against fire. But it reduces bleeding. Less likely to bleed as resistance is increased. Poison. Resistance to poison. Less likely to be poison as resistance increases. Plague. Resistance to plague. Less likely to suffer plague. All these three do the same fucking thing. Except bleed rarely ever happens. Poison is annoying, but plague is basically an instant kill unless you have something to cure it. Because plague is basically very fast fucking poison. And it sucks. Anyway... That's enough of that. Let's go fire first boss. Let's see if I die. Hello, Vanguard! His attacks can one-shot you. So your best strategy is just to get behind his dumb ass. Oh, that's bad. Come on, do your little thing. Fly, you son of a bitch. Come on, jump up in the air. Yeah, basically want him to do that. You want to bait him to do that. And this guy takes a good, decent chunk of damage from magic. Oh, 
Oh, I don't like him when he does the double. Ah, I rolled into it. Oh, I'm alive. How'd I live? Come on, do your slam. Come on, do your slam so I can heal myself. Fortunately, I can still do a little bit of movement while I'm casting. Ooh, I do not want to be in front of him. Especially when he does that. Take it slow. No need to rush. You technically want to dodge away from his weapon. Come on, do the slam. It's not the slam. Oh, whatever. Die. Woo! I thought the spell would not go off before he got killed. Oh, God. Still stressful. The tutorial boss is still hard. Because as you saw, he almost one-shot me. And I am clad in light armor. So, I'm surprised I survived at all. But hey! We get the bonus reward. We get the Great Demon Soul. And we get to warp to a new area. sound good at all. <laughs> Alright, let's go see our prize. Oh! Goody! They expect you to fight this. This big suka is known as the Fire Dragon God. Or rather, the Dragon God. I just say fire because of, uh, well, reasons. He's from the intro. And he is big. And he's ready to sock somebody in the face. Anyway, our main reward actually for being the Vanguard is his soul, as well as a bunch of items. As a little bonus. I can't believe I actually defeated him. I thought I was gonna lose. I fought. I was fucked. The Loon Grass, which is basically a max potion. Shard of Hardstone. Shard of Sharpstone. Renowned Soldier's Soul. Renowned Soldier's Soul. And our last item to grab is the Renowned Soldier's Soul. So our total rewards for defeating the Vanguard is his soul, a bunch, some healing item, two healing items, some souls, and some upgrade materials. Hardstone and Sharpstone are your basic upgrade materials. A shard of hard ore enhances straight swords, axes, hammers, and so on. A basic ore that can increase the power of a weapon. Weapons can be strengthened by hard stones to a maximum level of plus 10. Sharp stones increases daggers, curves, swords, spears, and so on. The upgrade system in this game is extensive. Well, time to die. You 
died. However, the next traps you shall remain in this world as a soul forever. from oblivion in a sense this is the nexus it holds together the northern land of boletaria thou canst not exit the nexus but each of the five arch stones will connect it. I'm sorry, could you repeat that when I'm conscious? You have died. The Nexus has trapped your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your physical body. Nexial Binding. Yeah, we're essentially a ghost now. <laughs> Great. And we're going to be stuck like this for a while. Practically the whole game for a certain mechanic. But we made it to the Nexus, and this is as far as I'm going to go for today. This is a good stopping point. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been no God 21 this but let's play Demon Souls. In the next episode, we're going to explore the Nexus and see what we can find. Mainly, we're going to be talking to NPCs. <laughs> but until then, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you all next time, and I believe it's hold the X button? Yes, for emotes. Oh, I have to, hold, I have to keep holding it. Uh, there we go.